the last few months, masks have become an essential part of what we wear every day. And because of this, I've been trying to come up with ways to make masks look more fun and exciting while still being functional and keeping people safe. I then found a local competition here in South Africa to make a mask inspired by butterflies. Now, if there's one thing I love to do when I get a topic for a brief or a creative project like that, it's to completely ignore it. Or if not completely ignore it, at least to aggressively push the boundaries of what is technically allowed while still meeting the basic requirements of the brief. Um, so still technically doing what I'm told, but like not really doing what I'm told. So I took that butterfly theme and instead of making a butterfly mask, I decided to make a moth mask. I pulled inspiration from the rosy maple moth, which is this gorgeous fuzzy pink and yellow moth which has been on my mind and my Pinterest boards for months now. My obsession with this moth was only further fueled by my queen, Shea Coulee, on Drag Race All Stars 5, wearing a metamorphosis look inspired by this very same moth for her 3-in-1 runway look on episode 3. After narrowing down my inspiration and deciding that my mask would be a patterned, embroidered version of the rosy maple moth, it was time to get started. I started by making a basic mask from pale pink satin. And if you want to see my tutorial on making fabric masks, I'll link it down below because that's the technique I used here. Next, I cut out a piece of pink furry fabric and stuck it down the middle of the mask as my moth's body. I decided I wanted to have two smaller pink wings and two larger light yellow wings. I cut these out of felt and made sure that they fit the body and didn't look too strange, but I didn't sew them on just yet. Next, it was time to open my carefully organized, color-coordinated embroidery box, which, as you can see, is definitely not just a knotted mass of thread that I have to untangle any time I try to work with it. I pulled out some pink and yellow threads, as well as some mustards and some similar shades to add some variation to the wings. I cut out smaller pieces of felt to add different color details to the wings. On the larger yellow wings, I added these eye shapes in pink to mimic the false eye spots that some moths and butterflies have. I used a darker pink embroidery thread to stitch down these felt shapes and then added more stitch details on all four wings. After finishing embroidering the wings, I added some pearls as a finishing touch. I hand stitched the wings onto the mask along the sides of the body, making sure to leave the outsides of the wings free so it still looked like my little moth could fly. Finally, I added on two black beads as eyes for my moth, and my mask was complete. Now, because I love doing more than necessary, and because I love the feathery look of moth's feelers, I decided not to stop there, and I continued by making a pair of feelers of my own. I started with a plain Alice band, and then I took some pipe cleaners. I folded each pipe cleaner in half to make sure it was stable enough to stay up, and then wrapped a second pipe cleaner around the base so I had something to hot glue onto my Alice band. Next, I took these little fabric leaves I found at my local craft store and wrapped the wire centers around the pipe cleaners. I repeated this until each feeler was full and feathery. Once my feelers were complete, I hot glued them onto the band. To cover the join of the headband and the feelers, and to add some extra colour to the headband, I glued some fake flowers to the Alice band as a finishing touch, and then both my moth mask and my moth feelers were complete. Yay! Let me know if you enjoyed this video and if you'd like to see more weird mask creations and more ways to make masks less boring and just bring some joy into the fact that we're literally living in a pandemic. Stay safe and I'll see you next time. Bye!